Hi everybody, this is Michael Rosenblatt, and I'm doing a series now on YouTube, uh, and one of them is Art Made Easier, and the concepts of, of art, in my opinion, from doing art for, since the 70s, you know, for many years, um, and, uh, I boiled it down to a few different things that <clears throat> light, shadow, shapes, and how they flow is basically the most important part of art in painting or in um, any visual art form, two-dimensional, is how the objects, how the shapes, how the shading and light uh, flow together in harmony or disharmony and how that affects people before you even get to telling the story the illustration part of it that tells the person you know what's going on and what this is or what that is the uh, important thing is the actual visceral impression you get when you first see something. You see a powerful impact with a big object and a lot of contrast before you know it's a sunset and a tree, a silhouette of a tree in front of it. The first thing you see is this huge contrast of dark and light. So, before you tell the story, otherwise, it's more of a very illustrate. It get that's why they say it gets more illustrative the more you focus on the storyline behind it and telling the trying to make it more of a of a uh, description by text. You know the the hat, the apple, the this, the that, you know, telling it the story of it. And the fine art side of that is that there's more to it than that. Like it's the, um, the shading and the, the beautiful contrasts, the the way the colors blend together. That's the initial thing you see. And a lot, if you think of that, you know, then you're much more closer to what art is if you do that. You know, you're thinking of like the speckles of light on the water is first a dance of light and color before you see it as this you know, this uh, shining light on water. You see the, the dance of colors and that's what you see first, you know, is the, your initial impression, the colors and the, you know, all of that. Otherwise you could do a black and white sketch and make it very matter of fact. This is what this is, this is what the, you know, but when you start to blend and you start to soften, then you get a visual equivalent of a song, the visual equivalent of a, um, like a symphony orchestra that has a deep section of bass. Uh, and then they have a section of very high pitched uh, flutes. And then, you know, you have a, the um, different drums, kettle, drum, big, strong, powerful, and deep. And so by combining all of those together, you have a, a visual song. So this is all you're trying to really convey to somebody when they, somebody really, what is it that makes somebody really love a uh, painting? You know, what is it? Um, when you think about it, if it was just 
the fact that they liked horses and you plastered a picture of a horse on there, they'd say, oh yeah, there's a horse, but they won't like it until you put your energy into it, your um, expression, you're expressing your feeling for this animal and they're picking up on how you feel and you're they're you know um you're inviting them into your world when you do art so it's just like when you invite somebody into your home you know you want to spruce it up and put your best you know foot forward and the same as you know in painting you're inviting them into your world you're not saying you know you're saying welcome welcome to my world you're not saying well you have to like it you don't have to like it but this is it you know this is my particular take on the world and you know you don't have to like it but um, here it is, you know, and hope, I hope you do like it. I hope you enjoy it, but it's not uh, necessary that you like it. Because, you know, if other people like it, and you, you know, had fun doing it, then it's worth showing to people. You know when it's something you don't want to show. You know when... And even then, if you do show it, somebody might like it more than you do. So don't be afraid to share what you have. It's really, you're going to experience all the emotions of life and art. You're going to experience all of the emotions of life. The good, the bad, you know, the painful. It's what life is, you know? It's, it's a combination of pain and joy. It's not just one or the other. Hopefully it's not all pain, but it won't be all joy either. It's just a combination of both. And then art, the idea is not always just to communicate the best of times. And that's more of a glossy, you know, illustration. That's the difference. And whereas life is a huge emotional, you know, it's like the vis the illustration of it. The objects are the tip of the iceberg. Below your, below that tip, you're actually seeing, you know, what people, how people think, and that's how it really, what it really comes down to. You're not painting. A tree you're painting how you feel and then people see how you feel in that painting how you express you know that feeling you can do a painting to look exactly like a photo uh, or a, excuse me you can paint, do a painting of a tree to look just like a photo or you can do the most innovative you know uh, imaginative version of that tree, which I'm seeing a lot more of now. It feels like even when I was in the mural world, like in the 80s, it was very realistic, um, you know, kind of things. Um, the water, you know, the whales. Relatively realistic. Now, anything goes. So the work, things change, and um, don't be afraid to be wild in your art. And if it does jump out, and people see something, will see something new for the first time in their life. But don't be afraid to do something conservative either, and um, express the beauty of a fine art rendition of a sunset or something like that. It, there's really no bad or good. I'm not saying you ever have to force yourself to go 
to do something wild or avant-garde. You should want to do it and it should just come out. Otherwise, it's similar to, you know, trying to be like, too acceptable on the other side, you know, where you're too conservative and, and worried about what people think. So you should be free to do either. The freedom to be very um, mainstream, but in your own way, I guess. And the freedom to be totally revolutionary and on the cutting edge, you know, so there's, you can pretty much take it in any direction or all the directions at the same time. If you looked at um, Picasso, you know, he, uh, Picasso had no fear of experimenting and what people thought. Matter of fact, it might have even been a, a kind of a thrill to experiment to hear the emotional responses, good or bad. You know, you gotta be willing to, to take the good with the bad, you know, and even crave, you know, that kind of feeling like, uh, you know, when you first see a hate, some kind of uh, troll or hate on your, uh, on your page, you know, you know it's coming. Actually, in videos, the more people that, the more viewership you have on videos, the more you're gonna get uh, hate too. Uh, if you have only like 13 people see it, you're probably not gonna get anything uh, or anyone saying anything because most people don't say anything. But the more people that see it, the more you get individuals that do feel like uh, either, you know, trying to, um, I don't know, maybe they're in a bad mood and want to share the wealth, you know, maybe they're not happy with their life, so they feel like this is a powerful thing to do. This is something that gives them some feeling, some feeling of power, you know, so you will get those people with large viewerships, and if you're doing something, you know, that you're... You know, you could, if it doesn't look exactly like a museum painting, you know, there's going to be criticism. But then you also get the positives, the, the compliments and the praises and all of that. And um, you got to be willing to, I think, experience both unless it's just a personal hobby for you. So I would definitely go with, I think, the excitement of just letting it happen. You know, like if you were a skydiver jumping out the plane, you know, it's not, you have to face your fear. And um, then you realize that there wasn't that much to be afraid of in the first place. It's always the fear that makes everything seem impossible or something you don't want to do. You know, I did like these murals that needed scaffolding, needed all of that stuff. And I just, I wanted to do it so much that I found away you know I taped um, brushes and rollers I put them on the top on the poles you know the extension poles and did that or I had a ladder you know and just climbed on the ladder and just kept at it you know it wasn't it could have been better because with the proper equipment you know you have a chance to make it to work on it a little bit more and all that but um, Anyway, it was some something I needed to do. And I can tell you in almost every case that um, there's never going to be a perfect time to do anything in art. There's no perfect time. There just is doing it 
And sometimes the best things are done under the greatest odds or strains because it brings out something in you maybe that you didn't think you had. Also, I noticed in art um, that if you do a certain thing and you're trying to figure out how you want it to go, I've noticed that there, that when you get some, cla you get this uh, clarity suddenly and you start connecting things and it all comes together, you know, as you're doing it. And those are like the most amazing experiences, you know, known to man is when you're right on the cutting edge of a new idea. Just think, um, if you've ever had some amazing idea and it worked out how that felt, that's um, almost the ultimate. I mean, there's very few things that uh, compare to when that light bulb goes off, you know, in your head. Very few things compare to that. It's really amazing. So this is the things you really should be thinking of the new ideas because in the whole world it's most people go through life just you know surviving and that i do that too i i have to survive and it's not easy there's a lot of challenges in my life you know a lot of challenges with disability and all kinds of things but there's also gifts and blessings so I would say and similar to most people you know I have a, I've had a mix of great fortune and really bad fortune um, I've, had, I've survived car accident I survived uh, hearing loss I lost my hearing on my right side um, I lost a whole barn of paintings in a fire and um, you know my son turned out to be disabled with autism you know so I have to spend a lot of my time uh, in that caretaking position so it's slowed my progress down in art this is why I'm saying if th there is no perfect time because there may not be a time at all later. So there is no perfect time. Things can change, you know, like suddenly you have to, you have responsibilities or like if you look back on World War II, a lot of actors and, and entertainment um, people had to, do, um, men had to join the army because uh, of World War II, they had to defend the country before they could entertain the country. They had to defend the country. So before you can entertain people in your life, you've got to feed them, you know, so keep them alive. So anyway, that's, and fight for survival. So you don't know what's gonna happen later so just go ahead do yourself a favor and make it happen today you know not yesterday of course and not tomorrow because it's not guaranteed I know it's a cliche to say it, but it's true the future is not guaranteed so this is a great time. This is the only time to do anything is now because it's, I know you have to, sometimes like you put, you have, you can schedule something saying, okay, I'm going to do this in an, a few days. That's okay. But don't just say, um, I'm, I'll do it. It'll happen. It won't happen unless you put it down on a calendar, unless you schedule something. So even if you can't paint now or tomorrow, make an appointment to paint, you know, put it down, say, I'm going to do it just like anything else. If you don't put it down, if you don't make the appointment, a lot of times it never happens, you know, so 
I would say that, you know, and then um, your natural love of creativity will take over. But sometimes it needs a little kick in the butt, you know. You need to push, you know, that because sometimes you don't always want to. Even if it's a passion, there are times you don't want to do something. Even even if it's your a gift given to you. And a lot of times you don't want to do it or just, you know, you expected more and it didn't happen. So now, you know, you don't want to bother, you know, all those things. It's, um, that's what makes things, you know, happen is sometimes you do have to grit your teeth. And so that's, I guess, I don't know where I'm going with this, um, but it's very important to just have discipline, you know, in uh, all areas of your life. And you could even think of doing art as similar to uh, the intellectual version of getting ready for a fight. You don't want to be, you know, present yourself anything less than, should, you know, the fact that you totally sacrificed for people to see the entertainment that comes from having totally sacrificed to that's what they're wanting to see Sac that you sacrificed that you didn't just you know uh, give it a you know once over like a amateur you know they want to see somebody that's totally dedicated that's what they pay to see in a movie or, a, you know, pay a band or something to see is the total dedication. And uh, same thing with art. You want to buy something that looks like it has total dedication to it. You know, that you're single-minded, that you're focused, you know, that you're not going off in all different directions, that you're, that you completed something, a complete you know, idea. That's what I think people really want to see. So, um, think of that. Think of the adventure that waits for you every time you open your paint uh, tubes and get started. You know, the, the good, the bad, everything. There's going to be times you know, if that's what you're doing, you're spending a lot of time alone, that you're gonna be lonely. And, uh, but just think of it as the price you pay to do something great. You know, there's a lot you have to pay in order to get something out of it. And with art, it's your pain with your life, you know, to do that, to give people this, you know, feeling of wow, the you know wow factor, and uh, that's what you're paying, or people want to pay to see and pay to have is that passion. They're paying for passion, so if you give them passion, they pay you. That's pretty much how it, you know it works. And, uh, but I just love painting and I didn't realize just how much I loved painting, you know, until there's not as much time as there used to be to do that. So that's why I've been so insistent that you start now and that there is no perfect time to be creative. So that's, there is only today to be creative. And then tomorrow will be another today. And then you'll be creative again, so. But I just really love painting and I want other people to, you know, to do what makes them happy. And I want people to um, take my advice and, paint as much as you can, you know, 
and while you can and have no regrets and take chances in painting. You know, maybe you're not supposed to put this next to this, but you do it anyway. So that's another thing you want to do is take chances uh, and just have fun with it and then make videos like this and share that your thoughts with other people so that we get a, a chain of people, you know, that others just coming up can look at and listen to. And I'll be also, you know, revealing a few secrets, not all, but just a few secrets that I think might help people. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, subscribe to this, to my channel, uh, Michael Richard Rosenblatt, and be sure to share uh, and comment. Thanks again, and have a great day. Bye-bye.